Has anyone ever rambled on and on and on about their problems to you without stopping to the point where you just wanted to walk away? Uh, I, I think I got about 20 minutes of that for you coming. <laughs> coming up, we'll talk about why letting them do that and being there for them might be just the thing both of you need. But first, this is the FitMass where together we learn to develop habits that help us live beyond our mental health struggles to create happier, healthier lives. He's Zach. He lives in the future with his anxiety. He's Jeremy, and he lives in the past with his depression. And we get together once a week in the present to share the obstacles we face and how we overcome them. Yeah. So, Zach, how you been? That's a great question. I'm not exactly sure, which is pretty much the same thing I said to my therapist the other day when she asked me that very question. I've had the same thing. I was just at the physical therapist's office yesterday dealing with some knee stuff. And she asked, you know, have you been since the last treatment? And I just was like, I have no idea. I've been so, so caught, caught, up caught up in stress and anxiety and being busy. Like, you know, all kinds of work stuff, home stuff going on. It's just one of those times in my life right now where it's just like vine to vine where I just feel like, you know, two weeks is a minute. Is that yeah. is that what you're going through too? Yeah, pretty much. I know, like, I talk to my therapist once a week and... When she asked the question, I like literally was just like, well, I just talked to you yesterday. <laughs> Wait, no, that was a week ago. There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened in the middle. And I was like, oh, right. That triggered me. This triggered me. That triggered me. That was stressful. This was anxiety producing. This was depressing. That was a happy moment. This was cool. This I didn't like. This sucked. That didn't suck. Like all of a sudden I was like, Oh, and there's all that, all these things in the middle of it. And I don't think I realized how quick it went by or how stressful it was until I verbalized it all. And was like, Oh, no wonder why today I'm tired. And I've got like nerve pain in my foot and like my muscles hurt. And like, you know, the, the physical manifestation of my anxiety was hitting. So Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was, it's funny it was... to me that you had that in the therapist's office because I've had similar things. Like just being in the physical therapist's office, like when she's doing the treatment, I have a moment where I'm like, okay, this is all I have to do right now. And like everything else goes away for five minutes and I can finally sort of settle. Uh, I was at the dentist the other day. Same thing. I'm laying them like, there's nothing else I can do right now but this. Like I just mm -hmm. need to be here. And it's funny, those forced moments, like it's uh, maybe, maybe this is a, a solution I'm looking for. I, I need to, to like uh, calendar block time for nothing, right? Just to, just to let, just to be, just to let it settle. And maybe it's meditation, you know, formally or whatever, but it's just interesting that I need to apparently schedule time to just not worry about everything or not have to put out some fire from minute to minute because it's those it's those forced moments where you have the therapist or someone to uh, a place you have to be a thing you have to do where you can finally go okay this gets all of my attention instead of everything getting some of it yeah i actually have a uh, i use an app for my calendar for work because you've seen my calendar it's busy it's always yeah. blocked i was on a call with somebody today who's like oh let me schedule a meeting for us with, for monday and he opened up his calendar he's like oh you have no availability monday and i was like no, nope. <laughs> you have no availability to like next April. Yeah. Um, and, but, but this, this app that I have, it connects to my calendar and I have a rule in there and it searches like, I think it searches three or four weeks out and it looks for blocks of space of an hour to an hour and a half. And it marks it as focus time or break time mm -hmm. um, and just blocks it off on my calendar so that I don't have those days where it's non-stop meetings i actually have a break in the middle of it and those days i just get up and go sit on the couch meditate yeah. do like roll around on the ground on a foam roller or something like that like take a few minutes to do nothing it's been really handy well that's the thing is i i don't know that most maybe people maybe more people are more like your calendar than mine my calendar when you look at it not super full, but there's always stuff to be being done. And so it's whether it's responding to the emails that are coming in, responding to, you know, whatever stuff is going on with the kids, like things that you can't really plan for. My day sort of fills up with those, partially because I'm not intentional enough about blocking out time and, and being dedicated about it. Ironic that I'm talking about the things you don't plan for oh. suddenly showing up and one just happened to you in the middle of this recording. <laughs> Actually, mm -hmm. I think that's the fourth one since we got on this call. It is. It has, uh, let's see, 
we're only a few minutes into the show and it's we've been on the call for like 40 minutes already i know this yeah. is all we've got so it's hard when you know you're you're basically swatting flies right trying to trying to just get the day under control to then just pick okay right now i'm just going to stop and deal with whatever i'm not dealing with internally because i've been dealing with everything externally for so long i am surprised like in in today's world like that we actually get as much done as we do get done like focused work like smart intellectual stuff like you know building rockets and things like that because i know like you know engineers who work on spaceships and you know that at you know spacex or nasa or whatever right they've got kids they've got soccer practice right they have all the same things i do yeah and like you know i can hardly get the dishwasher loaded correctly and they're designing things that go up into space so right it is it is surprising to me that with like all the distractions all the things all the stuff that we're constantly move 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 that we get anything done anymore here's here's something i've learned about myself recently and, and i think this may be why i'm feeling so stressed is i'm wildly motivated to do nothing so like if i have a bunch of stuff to get done I'm going to do it really fast. Like I'm going to throw everything I have at getting it done so that I can get to the point where I have nothing to do. Yeah. And so I feel like for the last two weeks, my life has been get it all done, get it all done, get it all done. Oh, time for bed. Mm -hmm. Where like normally I can kind of space things out and work in some, some self care time during the day and, and do the things I need to do to keep myself sane. And because I haven't had that, I haven't had that ability to just, to just do nothing. Uh, I think that's why I'm, I'm feeling this like ramped up feeling cause I haven't had as much time for self-care. Uh, but, but it is funny how if the carrot dangling at the end of the stick is you get to do nothing as soon as this is done, man, I'll work harder on that thing than anything I've ever worked on in my life. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. Like if I've got a whole bunch of stuff to do, I'm going to go, you know what? Let me sit down and do nothing for about an hour and then I'm going to crush this. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Why does that work for you? I don't know. Because, well, sometimes I don't crush it. Sometimes I just continue to do nothing and I don't get the thing done. Right. That would be my danger is I, I would never get started on the on the we doing. Have, we can do a whole another show on procrastination, which I am real good at. <laughs> um, unfortunately, too. My whole, I work better under pressure is what I tell myself. But uh -huh. no, I put everything yeah, off. Yeah, that's the anxiety uh, telling you all kinds of lies. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about you, but I am... Um, you know, going back to the original question of how are you doing? I know this intellectually, but, and every time it happens, it always surprises me. But, you know, I go through the week without really processing anything or spending, you know, like not, or, you know, thinking about everything that's going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And then it's that moment when I actually, somebody says, how is everything going? And you start talking about how everything is going. And, you know, I've said this a hundred times, it activates different parts of your, your brain when you talk through the same things that you're thinking about. Yeah. It activates different parts and you, you think about it differently. And how many times have you had an aha moment when you're just explaining something to a friend or whatever? I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like doing this podcast is like you and I get on and we literally just talk about things. And sometimes I have aha moments that I don't really like let loose into the show, but like we're just mm -hmm. talking, talking, talking about, like, oh, so that's why I do that thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Um, but it, it just amazes me how we keep all of this stuff bottled up. Just a simple, how are you doing from a physical perspective, mental perspective, spiritual perspective, we keep it all bottled up and, you know, it, it doesn't come naturally to talk about this stuff. Right. But when you do, I think it is super, super powerful. Well, and we're also increasingly isolated. So, so I, I don't know, many people might not have someone to talk to about that, especially guys, right? Like how many guys are going around talking about their, their feelings and what's going on with them and, you know, how they're doing. Right? That, that doesn't come up super often, I think, for a lot of guys. No, um, it's not. And it's, I mean, even, you know, myself included, like, you know, I talk about my feelings. I process my emotions and my feelings and, you know, it, it has been met with a, that's not normal, you know, reaction mm -hmm. from a lot of people. I think it's normal. Women think it's normal. Mm -hmm. Other men, some women and other men don't think it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. Yeah. And you, and you'll get kind of one of two uh, responses. It's either the, like 
that's not normal. Like you'll clearly see in their response that what you're doing is not socially acceptable to that person or that person just, just kind, of, kind of walks away. <laughs> like they just, I'm, I'm done here. i this is not for me. See ya. But that was, you know, when I was seeing a therapist on a regular basis and you're going every week, so maybe you have this experience too, but this is one of my favorite things about having a regularly scheduled therapy appointment or, or, you know, pain resolution, whatever's going on. When it's on the calendar, typically, if you're like me, you look at the, you know, what's coming up on the calendar this week and you see, oh, I've got that appointment. And it makes me think, what am I going to tell them when I get there? And that's been the thing. I just haven't even really had time to look at the calendar to know what's coming. But I, that's one of my favorite parts because I'll start thinking about how am I doing? What's going on with me? What am I going to tell my therapist when I see him on Thursday? And I can begin the process of processing whatever's going on because I can almost anticipate what they're going to tell me. And just having it on the calendar is sort of that check-in, not only for that time, but ahead of time to start thinking about what is really going on with me and, and how can I get through this, you know, crisis, for lack of a better word, uh, you know, now rather than waiting until then to get to get the inevitable advice. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, like I said, the, the number of times I show up, I don't usually show up for my therapy session without having a, you know, something processed ahead of time like last week i would i definitely showed up and she's like how you been and i was like oh my god i don't know <laughs> right um but it, it definitely um almost like yoga for me like i don't i won't do yoga unless i go to a class right you know what i mean like you just it doesn't exist and i don't have the i don't know discipline wherewithal to like make that part of my daily routine at home and I, I can't figure that one out yoga like i can't do it unless i'm in a 97 degree room and a bunch of other people around judging my lack of flexibility yeah I can do it it's, it's because you're so competitive you're trying to be better than everyone else in the room i know when i'm at home even with yoga myself, i'm like this is so boring <laughs> It, it does. It sucks doing it by yourself in the living room. It's it's not the same spiritual experience. I have the same thing with my cold plunging. I have a little tub on the back deck and I use it a couple times a week, but it sucks, right? Like it's not fun to sit there by myself in cold water for you know, five to 10 minutes just for the sake of taking care of me. It's more fun to go with a bunch of people and shoot the shit about whatever and be distracted and, and have that, that uh, community aspect of whatever's going on. That's way more motivating to, to do these things than to just hold yourself accountable. Yep, checked it off the box. I did the thing for me today. But I do think it's good for me anyway. Like I, you know, when I talk to my therapist, it, I can compare, compare my therapy sessions from 20 years ago to my therapy sessions now. Mm -hmm. And 20 years ago, it was, hey, doc, I've got problem X, Y, and Z. And they're like, well, okay, well, let's try this and let's do this. And have you tried, you know, this and this and like, all these different things. And now I show up and I'm like, so listen, doc, I've got this problem and I tried to meditate on it. I used CBD. I did this, I did that. And I did this thing. And then I did this and I read this medical paper and like, blah, 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 like all these things. And it's not quite working. So I tried this and then that worked. And then I tweaked it this way. And, but, and they're usually just like, Oh, that's cool. See you next week. And like, th th there's not a lot of, advice anymore i'm just thinking out loud for the most part mm -hmm. um, 20 years ago it was like hey i feel like this and i don't know why and right you know today it's i feel like this and here's the reasons why i think that is list them all off you know mm -hmm. my mom was cruel my dad didn't pay attention my dad didn't love me you know i was fat all you know all the things right. and like and yeah, that you know you're probably spot on and i have to every now and again like i have to ask for like fact checks like hey am i crazy and thinking like x y and z and she's like no i don't think so yeah um, again it, it is so good to eat even though like i don't need like that direct you know hey you should use this approach or you should have you know you know when you have these feelings take note of them like i do all that stuff already right but it is so good to have it on the calendar for a week like last week where how are you doing and i was like Oh, I haven't even thought about me for the last week. It's been about other people and things I have to do and this and that. And, oh, right. My foot hurts. Why does my foot hurt? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. You're supposed yeah. to be like, you know, put lotion on it or some, whatever. Like, yeah, it is so good to just have that check in every now and again, even if you don't need it. 
Like, I probably don't need a therapist because I understand how it all works for the most part. Like, I'm not saying I know everything, but I know it enough to, like, interrupt my own thoughts and do my own thing on it. But I still do it because it is a good reminder for me to, like, take that moment for myself. Yeah, it's it's funny you're talking about comparing your therapy now to previously, right, 20 years ago, whenever. I know more and more. I mean, I, I go far less than I used to. I used to go weekly and then monthly, and now I just kind of go, you know, sort of as needed. Um, but I got to a point with my therapist where pretty much every week he would say, is this working for you? Like, do you, do you feel like you need this? Because I feel like I mostly just validate your feelings. Like you come in and tell me things and I say, yeah, that makes sense that you would be feeling that way because what you're going through is really hard. Uh, so that's really interesting. But the other thing that, that happened more and more frequently was having the appointment and being like, I don't really have anything to talk about. Like th things are kind of good, right? Like the, the more you, you learn how to deal with this stuff on your own, the less you need that resource. It's certainly still wildly valuable. And I, I do think there's a lot of value in just having something on the calendar, whether you're going through something or not, because if your life is anything like what I think we've described here, you're probably ignoring a lot and taking care of everything else around you. So if you can just have that hour a month or whatever it is to check in and, and deal with whatever you're not dealing with, I, it can only do good for you. Yeah. There's a really cool um, podcast and I love the name of the podcast because it's a, it, it's a CrossFit podcast, but it's called the best, um, best hour of the day. And it's referring to, you know, the hour that you do CrossFit, which I tend, my soul leaves my body during that hour. So I don't know if it's the best hour of my day, but it's a, an hour of my day. But the other best hour of my day is when I have therapy. Like, again, she won't even say a word. I just talk for an hour. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, I feel better. Like, it, there is just so much power in getting shit off your chest. Like, we, we did an episode on complaining. Mm -hmm. like, you can complain. You can do all those things. Like, if it's you're complaining about the same thing over and over and over again and nothing's changing. That's insanity. But, you know, just getting things off of your chest has, it's a lot of power and then getting advice on what's on your chest is a whole nother level. But like, sometimes you just need to unload. All right. Well, I think we've gotten enough off of our chest in our last uh, several minutes of rambling. I hope it's been valuable for you. If it has and you think someone else may benefit from it as well, please share this episode with them. Head to our website, thefitmess.com and hit that share button so others can hear what you've heard here today. We thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode at thefitmess.com. See you around. We know this podcast is amazing and it doesn't seem to lack anything, but we need a legal disclaimer. Prior to implementing anything discussed in this podcast, it is your responsibility to conduct your own research and consult your physician. You should assume that Jeremy and Zach don't know what they're talking about, and they're not liable for any physical or emotional issues that occur directly or indirectly from listening to this podcast.